Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is LA Tech Trends back again here for the Switch's six year anniversary. So, the Switch turned six years old on March 3rd, 2022. Um, Switch came out, I believe, on March 3rd of 2016. Yeah, came out on March 3rd of 2016. And uh, this video is going to be kind of punishing to do because I have so much to talk about. But uh, we'll get through it. Um, my story with the Switch is basically, I remember when it was initially announced, I was not certain that it was going to succeed. It seemed like Nintendo was repeating a lot of their past mistakes with the Wii U, with underpowered hardware, etc., etc. But the Switch had something up its arsenal, and that is portability. And portability basically um, made this console the go-to console to play AAA games on handheld and that's why it is one of the most successful consoles of all time um, because it's just a great machine and a great way to experience uh, old games new games um, you, you name it the switch has it and um, it's helped me get through the best times and through the hardest times so I kind of owe it to the switch so without further ado let's get started with this video thanks First up, we have uh, Metroid Dread. This game came out last year for the Nintendo Switch and was the newest entry in the Metroid franchise. Uh, this was actually announced like almost a surprise to Metroid fans. Um, I thought I had to wait until Metroid Prime 4 for a new Metroid experience, but Nintendo surprised all of us with a brand new 2D traditional style Metroid game. And oh my god, this game is absolutely phenomenal. I've only uh, played... Uh, a quarter of it i haven't even played the whole game only played five hours of it but i hope to get back into it i did get sidetracked but man this is the best metroid game i have played it is amazing next we have immortals phoenix rising i did open this up but i did also get sidetracked with this game it looks like an amazing game though i can't wait to jump into it everyone i know who's played it can't keep um the excitement at bay everyone just raves on and on about this being essentially a greco roman style um breath of the wild next up we have pokemon legends arceus this game came out this year absolutely phenomenal game definitely a renaissance for pokemon um it basically implemented 3d gameplay and open world mechanics into a rather linear franchise very revolutionary game and a very fun one at that i have a review on it so shameless plug check it out speaking of pokemon we have new pokemon snap i do enjoy this title it is a very good sequel to pokemon snap but you can't really expect much i mean pokemon snap on the nintendo 64 was basically just a pokemon photography simulation game and this is the same thing but it looks far more beautiful actually to be honest, this is one of the most beautiful games on the Switch. The environments and the maps, the only complaint that are quite tiny, but um, there's a lot of effort put into everything. Next, we have Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. You will not see Breath of the Wild in this collection video because I sold that game a few years back after beating it. But Age of Calamity is an absolutely phenomenal sequel. Uh, I meant prequel, my apologies. It is a sequel in a sense because... It is the second Breath of the Wild game to come out, but the story is a prequel story, so it is 100 years prior to when Link wakes up from his cryo sleep, and um, you basically see how they tried to save Hyrule, but 100 years later, you all know what happens, it becomes a fucking wasteland. Alrighty, so on to the next stack, so let's start this off with... WarioWare Get It Together. So WarioWare Get It Together is definitely not the best WarioWare game to come out. But in recent memory, it is absolutely a fantastic follow-up to WarioWare Gold, which was a pretty decent WarioWare title. Then again, guys, it's kind of hard to relive that same nostalgia I had with Smooth Moves on the Wii and the games on GBA and DS. But this is absolutely just a great WarioWare game. And it does the job quite well. And it's a pretty beautiful sequel. Next we have Cruise and Blast, don't want to waste any time talking too much about this, but it is an absolute blast, okay, okay, enough with the puns, but it's a blast, it's a very fun game. 
Next, we have the Hotline Miami Collection. This has Hotline Miami 1 and Hotline Miami 2. Wrong number. I've only played through Hotline Miami 1, but I definitely plan on getting into Hotline Miami 2. These are some of the best indie games to ever come out. These are essentially dungeon crawler-esque games where you pick up a variety of weapons. It's one-hit kills, one-hit deaths. Very unforgiving, very punishing. And to add to that, it takes place in the 1980s very cool game now also it comes with a little booklet in here which i think is super duper cool let's take a look at the booklet um the reason i'm you know taking out the booklet is because i've wanted to showcase it on my channel but i really never had the opportunity to do so so it's just an absolute pleasure to you know look through some of these pages and the fact that they even added a booklet, they didn't need to do this, but you can tell Devolver Digital really put some love into this package. Next up we have uh, No More Heroes 3. I haven't really played too much of this game, but it's absolutely fantastic from what I have played so far. It's a very good sequel to No More Heroes 2. It does have technical issues. You can definitely tell this was made using the same engine as the Wii game. At least that's what I'm assuming. But then again, it's still a pretty beautiful game, guys. It's a very beautiful game. And uh, the music is fantastic. The new villain is absolutely annoying and asshole-ish as he can be. But that's part of the fun. Uh, just a quirky Japanese game. And uh, it's a great exclusive for the Switch. So, by the way... I already redeemed that, but if you want to give it a shot, go ahead. Next up, we have Big Brain Academy, Brain vs. Brain. I played this with my sister. We enjoyed it. We had a few laughs out of it. The only reason I kind of got it, though, was because it was like 15 bucks the day it came out. Well, the week it came out, Best Buy had already put it on sale, so... Woohoo! Obscure Nintendo IP is not getting the attention. Um, this isn't really the system selling Nintendo IP, but it's cool that they are paying attention to some of their smaller franchises, definitely. I would have appreciated a Pushmo game, though, or, you know, Dylan's Rolling Western, something more, um, in demand. Uh, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, no comment. You've heard about it, you've played it, you love it. It's the best fighting game ever made. It has all your favorite Nintendo franchises and more characters from Sega, Square Enix, Konami. All these fantastic just childhood favorites emerge in one game. And it's a blast. Next we have Sonic Colors Ultimate. I beat this game in 5 hours. And what's kind of disappointing is I wasn't expecting this game to be so easy. I remember it was punishing back in the day. But then again, keep in mind, I was a kid back then. Um, did I notice much of a graphical difference? No, maybe because I haven't turned on my Wii for half a decade, but, um, it's still a great game. Not much has changed. It's still a wonderful game. The Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. I really do love how this game does take place in Japan. I love how this game takes place in the past and it plays as kind of a prequel to the Great Ace Attorney. Um... Then again, I did try to play through this game. I have not gotten too far. I really suck at these kind of visual novel point-and-click adventure type games. But for what it is, it's pretty damn cool. Next up, we have Everspace Stellar Edition. I believe a sequel was announced. And it's basically a space roguelike. I think Star Fox. Uh, but essentially, it's when you die... You have to start all over. It's a procedurally generated game. Um, but it's a beautiful game. And it runs phenomenally on the Switch. Uh, I can't imagine how beautiful it would look on the PS5 or on the Xbox Series consoles. Because it already looks great on the Switch. And uh, in handheld mode at that. South Park, The Fractured But Whole. I've not played it, but it looks fantastic from what I've heard. Star Wars Pinball. I did a one minute review on this game. Literally took a minute to review it. It's Star Wars. It's Pinball. I love both. I had to have it. And I've played the hell out of it. The Witcher 3 Complete Edition. 
I have not played this game because I am an idiot and I definitely need to do so. But I have played Cyberpunk, which is weird because everyone likes... From CD Projekt Red, everyone likes The Witcher, but no one likes Cyberpunk, so... Uh, DC Supervillains, popped it in once, never got back to it. Shaq Fu Legend Reborn. This game was actually, I believe it was kickstarted. And it's absolutely just so much fun. It's just absolutely phenomenal. It's got so many great jokes, so many throwbacks to the era. Um, is it the most beautifully, most uh, well-articulated game I've ever seen? Hell to the no, but it is still super fun. And I don't know, Shaquille O'Neal is just a likable guy. So maybe that's why I'm such a big fan of this game because I, I love Shaq and I love, uh, you know, I'm a big Lakers fan, so maybe, maybe there's a little bias. Snack World Dungeon Crawl Gold. From what I've seen, it looks amazingly fun. Graphics look fantastic. Gameplay looks great. So you can tell I haven't opened it though. Um, I wasn't even going to buy this game. I didn't plan on purchasing it. I bought it at Best Buy, believe it or not, on clearance for like $12. And um, this is a level 5 game. So same people who made Yokai Watch. But it looks like level 5 is just going to stay local to Japan. Their, their games don't really get too big out here. Uh, here's Civilization 6. Civilization 6 is just one of those games where uh, you start playing it and you don't stop. I have like 60 hours into this portable version. Into this downgraded watered down Switch version. And this is the best $6 I've ever spent. I remember I bought this game for 6 bucks at GameStop. Uh, thinking that I was going to play it once or twice, just try it out and maybe throw it back on the shelf. But this is one of the most addicting games I've played in my life. And uh, I'm a lifelong Sid Meier's Civilization fan, especially after this game. It's like I'm probably going to buy every single one afterwards. So keep making great games, Sid. Here's Taxi Chaos. Basically, it's an indie, but a spiritual successor to Crazy Taxi. I don't get where all the hate comes from this game doesn't really have the best reviews it's a very fun crazy taxi uh clone it plays like crazy taxi it looks like crazy taxi the only problem is it doesn't really sound like crazy taxi the soundtrack is very very generic but then again it's a fun ass game lego the incredibles uh is another good one i beat this game from start to finish played through both movies and the adaptation they did here was superb they got the feel right they got the energy of those movies the wit the humor everything from my childhood films was incorporated so perfectly and so fluidly uh, the gameplay is just wonderful it's an open world type game you drive around in classic 1950s as cars same way you would if you were mr incredible in the movie you take on old foes childhood favorites and if you grew up in the early 2000s like i did you are going to have a blast 20 dollars well fucking spent next up we have another underrated game battle in wonder world most people say this game is trash i don't think so um, they could have done a way better job with it. It's not a 10 out of 10 game. It's more like a 7 out of 10 for me. I feel like they rushed it. I really do. This game needed some more polish. But then again, Balin is a very likable character. Um, and um, also they put together a very beautiful package. Will it ever come to the same vein as Sonic Adventure? Will it ever come to that, uh, how do I put this, level of enjoyment, that level of just phenomenal nostalgia gameplay? Definitely not. But, um, hey, um, they tried, I guess. Next, we have Catherine Full Body. Um, I mean... As a male, I, I, I love tits, and this game has plenty of those. So, um, I'm not even gonna lie. The only reason I bought this game was tits. That's a great game too. Nintendo Labo Toy Con Two. Here's my name in Armenian. Armenian lesson for you guys. I hate how the Nintendo Labo games look. They just look like an eyesore on the shelf. And they're not very, um, this is the Japanese version, by the way, guys. They're not uh, very fun either if you're over the age of 10. 
Here we have Yoshi's Crafted World, definitely one of the best 2D platformers Nintendo's put out. I wasn't thinking that they were going to top Woolly World with that art style, with just that handcrafted look, that unique look. These awesome looking creatures and bosses that you take on along the way are just so cool and they all look like they're made out of paper and cardboard and wool and all these arts and crafts and materials. It's just... I know this game is aimed towards kids, but it's just such a good um, Nintendo-esque adventure. It really takes you to that creative side that Nintendo's got with their titles. And uh, it's a must-play, honestly. If you have a Switch, you can find this game for 30 bucks on sale, usually during the holidays. And even on eShop sales, I got my copy for 30 and I always revisit it because it's just an absolutely beautiful game. And it puts a smile on my face. You know, as an adult, life is stressful. Sometimes you just need a cute little character like Yoshi or Kirby to put a smile on your face. And, you know, it's very um, surprisingly very therapeutic. <clears throat> Excuse me. Next, we have the Assassin's Creed Rebel Collection. This was another Best Buy score. $15. Both games are phenomenal. Um, the game I mainly played on here, though, was Rogue, because I had already played Black Flag plenty of times. Uh, but I got this collection for Rogue, because Rogue was kind of like that obscure AC game on last gen, and a lot of people missed out on it, me being one of them. I did get stuck 15 hours in, which sucks, because I was almost done with the game. Um, but for the most part, it was unforgettable, and getting to actually play as the um what are they called <laughs> um essentially the antagonists of the assassin's creed universe getting to play as the antagonists for once it was super duper cool um i forget what they are called i know there's the assassin oh the templars yeah the templar so getting to play as a templar was very different and just so refreshing um next we have super mario maker 2 uh, Super Mario Maker 2 really tried to outdo the first one. It didn't outdo the first one for me. I do appreciate the effort, though. Um, they added gameplay from Super Mario Bros., of course, Super Mario Bros. 3, Mario World, Mario Bros. U, and da -da -da -da, Super Mario 3 The World, which is what I got the most enjoyment out of because I was not expecting to be able to build and play through my own Mario 3D World levels. So that was a pretty cool uh, addition. I've only put about 10 hours into this game. I was expecting to put way more, but it just didn't happen. It didn't bring enough new things to the table, but still an 8 out of 10 game for me. Very good game, and I highly recommend it. Game Builder Garage is one of the best games you can get on the Switch. Um, if you even have like a kid or a teen who's into programming, this is a great start. It, it's basically programming for dummies, programming 101. It teaches you the most simplistic aspects of game development. You can make your own games, play through them. And you can even play through other people's creations. And people have made some pretty crazy shit in this game. Uh, I remember when this game came out, I was like, I was at GameStop. And I'm like, oh, new Nintendo game, new IP, 30 bucks. I mean, logic, of course I'm going to buy it. 30 bucks for a brand new Nintendo IP. I love it when Nintendo puts out new games because you're so used to the typical franchises like the Marios and the Zeldas. Next, we have Rayman Legends Definitive Edition, one of the best platformers I've ever played in my life. Um, this particular version I've put about 15 hours into, and it's beautiful from head to toe. The graphics are absolutely stunning, and there's just love put into each and every level. The music is beautifully composed, and uh, the gameplay is just so smooth and so fluid, and um, unlike anything else I've ever played in the Rayman series. Uh, Origins was pretty close, but this game outdid Origins by um, by a landslide. Next up, we have Assassin's Creed 3. Unpopular opinion, this is my absolute favorite Assassin's Creed game. Don't forget, guys, this version actually also includes Assassin's Creed Syndicate as well, which was the, um, um, no, excuse me, Assassin's Creed Liberation, I apologize. Uh, which was the exclusive PS Vita expansion, standalone expansion to Assassin's Creed 3. Um, if I talk about this game, I'm going to go on and on for an hour as to how much I love this game. Um, it's amazing. It takes place in the American Revolution. You play as a young assassin who's got European and native blood. 
so there's also an internal conflict, an emotional conflict, a very psychological game, uh, a very well-crafted game, and surprisingly historically accurate. Really puts you in that time. Next up, we have the best deal known to mankind, uh, the two games in one bundle, which is something Sega has been doing for a while. Uh, 20 bucks and you get two of Sega's hits. In this case, that is Sonic Mania and Sonic Racing. To be honest with you guys, uh, I don't know uh, about everyone else here, but I got this for Sonic Mania. Uh, you kids have fun with Team Sonic Racing, but uh, Sonic and Sega All-Stars is where it's at for me. Um, but Sonic Mania, man, it's one of the best retro rebirth games I've ever seen. SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated. I couldn't really get into this game too much. I did personally prefer the SpongeBob movie game. I really wish they had remastered that instead, or even a uh, creature from the Krusty Krab. That was a phenomenal game. Uh, then again, as a lifelong SpongeBob fan, since I was like four years old, um, this did pull out my heartstrings. And even though it's not what I wanted, it, it was good enough. Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle. I haven't touched this game in a while. have not beaten it, but I have played a large chunk of it. And I can tell you guys that um, it is one of the best strategy games I have ever played. It's just so well built. And it's made by Ubisoft. Uh, I always thought the Rabbids were kind of annoying, but the inclusion of the whole Mario universe makes them surprisingly likable. Next up, we've got Mario Sports Games. So Mario Tennis Aces definitely a phenomenal mario tennis game it's a superb entry into the mario tennis franchise although i loved the gamecube and wii versions this is as good as it gets for current gen i mean the music is great the gameplay is energetic fast-paced and just the fluidity and the movement of the characters on the court really put you in the mood to play some tennis next we have mario golf super rush Something you don't know about me because this is mainly a tech channel. I love golf. And this does it for me. This is relaxing. The courses look beautiful. The nature is absolutely just lush and green and gorgeous. And man, I just, this is the best Mario Golf game I've played in years. Next, we have Story of Seasons Friends of Mineral Town. It's a very fun Harvest Moon game. Although they did change the name of Harvest Moon Story of Seasons, it still retains the same feel and just tending to crops and building your farm up from the ground up is just a fantastic experience. I know it's not for everybody, but for a stressed out motherfucker like me, <laughs> this is absolutely amazing and it's way cheaper than therapy. <laughs> Next up, we have Oddworld Strangers Wrath HD. Oddworld Strangers Wrath is one of my favorite Oddworld games. It does things differently. It's a first-person shooter, and you kind of play a Mandalorian-esque bounty hunter. That's the best way I can describe it. It's basically the Mandalorian set in the Oddworld universe. It's a very peculiar game. Next up, we have the Japanese classic, Katamari Damacy, Marie Roll. Uh, I remember one time uh, when when the pandemic just started, this game was rare for a while. You had people scalping it on eBay. And uh, when copies became redundant and when copies became widely available, finally, finally grabbed it for the low, low price of 20 bucks. And I'm glad I did because Katamari Damacy Rerolls got some of the best music in any game. And it's just, it's just a gorgeous game. Very fun game. Contra Rogue Core. Don't want to talk about it too much, but... I enjoyed Contra Rogue Core. I know not everybody did, but personally, I enjoyed it. Did I think it should have been a Contra game? No. I thought that if Konami had just made this a standalone IP, that would have been good. But pulling out people's heartstrings, trying to replicate people's childhood, by putting the Contra name to a game that clearly is not fucking Contra, is kind of insulting. Next up, we have Splatoon 2. As you can see, I used the reversible Salmon Run cover because I love Salmon Run. It is so addictive, so fun. Definitely one of my favorite modes in the game. Also, on the back, you've got just this art inspired by the game's main campaign. Um, just Splatoon 2 is a great shooter. And what I love about Splatoon 2 is the Octo expansion and the Salmon Run just added so much to this franchise so many new mechanics so much new gameplay so much new lore 
and uh, I just I I feel like I'm gonna get my mind blown with Splatoon 3 because if this added so much imagine how much the third game is gonna add uh, crossing my fingers with that fingers crossed that it, it's it's uh, just as good as the second one Darksiders 2 death in a div edition yeah you gotta really emphasize death when you're talking about Darksiders um, it's an absolutely amazing Zelda-esque. Uh, it's basically Zelda, but dark version is with hack and slash elements. Um, it's beautiful. You Essentially, you play as Def trying to... Um, how do I put this? Fix his, fix his brother's reputation in this game. So you go on this epic mission, slaying this. It's bloody, it's gruesome. It's amazing. And the fact that you can get all the Darksiders games on the Switch is a nice, nice little bonus of being a Switch collector. collection of mana it's good to have this because you know it does have three of the mana games it's got final fantasy adventure secret of mana and trials of mana so it's good to know that i have them but then again i'm not a big fan of jrpg so i still can't understand why i bought this then again some cool cover art paper mario the origami king now this was my favorite paper mario game since thousand year door um this game just blew me away the new gameplay mechanics the new worlds just the papercraft art style is back and more beautiful than ever finally in hd um the game blew my socks off the story was genuinely interesting the gameplay was genuinely refreshing uh i i just loved this game so much and lastly we have a game i did not play because i feel like this is going to become a rare collector's edition and that is Ministry of Broadcast. I kind of looked out on this. This was like 40 bucks or no, 30 bucks at Best Buy. And it looks like a really nice collector's edition. Um, then again, I made the stupid decision of opening my Witcher 3 collector's edition. And when I was overseas for a month, the box unfortunately got damaged. So I don't want to risk it with this game. But it does look like a fun, like dystopian-esque game. Anyways, guys, I'm going to have to cut it short for the ending of this video. Um, I'm absolutely exhausted, but it's worth it. I owe a lot to the Switch for being there. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching this video and subscribe to LA Tech Trends for more content. Love you all. Peace.